Hi there, my name is Dr. Bob Vernon. I was uh, formerly with uh, uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. I'm now retired. Um, the title of my talk today is uh, In Search of the Silver Bullet. The former silver bullet was Lindane, which uh, kept wireworms under control for decades. It's now gone, and so what we're gonna be talking about today is wireworm control uh, and the search for a new silver bullet. So I'm gonna be talking about uh, wireworm control in spring wheat, which is what I've been working on for the last uh, almost 20 years now. And I'm gonna be making some comments on winter wheat as well. So what happens when you plant a wheat crop in the field? If you have an untreated wheat, seed, you put it in the field, it will produce carbon dioxide as it germinates. It'll attract wireworms, which are attracted to CO2, and the wireworms will feed and kill wheat seedlings. And so um, once they've taken out one, the big wireworms will move to adjacent wheat and feed on them as well. So they can take out a lot of seeds at planting, and this is an example of some of the uh, wheat damage uh, that occurs during this time. The question is, can we prevent that? So can wireworm damage be controlled with seed treatments? And can wireworms actually be killed with wheat seed treatments? So these two questions uh, I hope to answer with this talk. And um, we have, over the years, looked at virtually every candidate insecticide for wireworm control. And uh, we have zeroed in on the neonicotinoids, which are now registered uh, as seed treatments for wireworms, as well as diamides. Those are what I'm gonna be talking about today. We've looked at other insecticides as well, but I don't have time to get into those today. So what have we found? Uh, with neonics, you put a neonic at 30 grams active per 100 kilogram seed. You put it on the seed, plant the seed, produce carbon dioxide, the wireworms move in. But instead of dying, the wireworms actually go to sleep. They become intoxicated or moribund for up to two months. And during this time, the crop becomes established. Okay, so the crop is not killed. And most wireworms will recover fully by midsummer. And uh, they'll be feeding on the uh, root areas of the established crop. Now in late spring or um, early summer, click beetles will come into the field, lay eggs in the wheat crop, and neonate wireworms are produced. But we find that we get zero kill of neonates with neonicotinoids. The result is that you get great crop establishment and yield, but you get little reduction in resident wireworms and no reduction of neonates. And wireworms are gonna be there to cause you problems the next year. And this is true for all neonics and all species that we've tested and we've published extensively on this over the years. Our efficacy work has been on spring wheat, but the same principle would also apply to winter wheat since fall feeding wireworms coincide with the planting of winter wheat. So with diamides, we found basically the same thing. Uh, wireworms become immobilized uh, while the crop grows, but the wireworms mostly recover by midsummer and they are there the next year. So to recap, the neonics cause reversible intoxication of wireworms, but poor kill. Usually good wheat stand protection is expected, and this applies to spring and winter wheat crops. And the same thing basically happens with the diamides. Uh, reversible intoxication, good wheat stand, uh, and that it also applies to spring and winter wheat crops. So what's new? Well, uh, the rest of the talk, I'm gonna talk about this metadiamide. It's a new class of insecticides known as Taraxa. Uh, I've been working with it now since um, 2012, and I'm gonna talk about what we can expect with Taraxa on spring wheat. If you put Taraxa on wheat at a real low level, five grams active instead of 30 grams with Neonex, this is what happens. The wireworms move in, they feed, and they die before they're able to cause significant crop damage. 
And what we found is that 80 to 90 percent of the resident wireworm populations in a field will die, which is even better than lindane. Also, um, when the crop becomes established and you get click beetles coming in and laying eggs and producing neonates, we get an 80 to 90 percent reduction of the neonate population in our field studies, which is even better or as good as lindane. So, I'm going to recap seven years of our wheat efficacy studies with Taraxa. Let's start with wheat stand protection. So we've got the seven years of studies that we've done, and this is the average of those studies, which indicates that on average, Taraxa and Cruiser give the same sort of stand protection in the field from wireworm damage. Now looking at wireworm mortality, we found that Taraxa will take out 80% on average of the wireworm population in that field relative to only 6% reduction, which is not uh, significant, by the way, with Cruiser. So this is what separates those two insecticides. So how does Taraxa measure up as a serial treatment to control wireworms? Do we have a new silver bullet? Well, it kills all pest wireworm species in all wireworm developmental stages. It protects cereals from damage without phytotoxicity occurring. It uses very small amounts per hectare. It uses about one-sixth the amount of neonics. It does not have residue concerns in the field because of the small amounts used. It is not highly toxic to vertebrates and will not endanger non-target species like some of the other registered insecticides. And from my years of research, uh, Taraxa definitely qualifies as the new silver bullet to replace the now banned lindane. And this is true for spring and winter wheat plantings. Thanks very much for watching this video. Uh, if you want additional information on wireworm biology and control, uh, there are other videos that you can access. And I strongly encourage you do so to uh, flesh out your understanding of uh, wireworms and, uh, and this new product, uh, Taraxa. Mm -hmm.